So here's a little project that I've been working on for about 12 months or so. It's a microphone preamp of my own design um, that I have yet to test. So um, in a future video, we will power this thing up and see if she actually works. Um, there's the power supply board there. Um, thought what I would do is just start uh, where I started um, with this this project, which is actually with the um, with the display, with the um, the metering. Um, now I'm something of a beginner um, with uh, circuit design like this, and so I thought I would start with something simple. And um, if that didn't work, I'd give up on the whole idea. So here is an example of the little board that I came up with, um, although. Perhaps what I should show you first is the actual meter that I intended to use. So that's the uh, the little meter that I decided to use. Um, I'm old enough to be a bit of a sucker for retro looking VU meters. Um, and these, um, these are back illuminated by a pair of yellow LEDs um, which shine through a translucent plastic uh, face. Um, and my concept, so one of the things, if I'm going to use VU meters, I, 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 I want them to have the right sort of ballistics. I want the, uh, that slow response that you get from a VU meter. Um, but then you really do need some kind of peak indication and, um, you know, it's really, really difficult to, um, retrofit the, you know, the little LED on the, on the face that some uh, some meters had, you could put one nearby, but that seemed a bit lame. So the idea that I came up with was to um, to fit in addition to the yellow LEDs that um, back illuminate this was to fit a pair of red LEDs, which are connected in inverse parallel to the existing yellow ones, so that all you need to do is to reverse the polarity of the drive voltage there, and the color of the backlight would change from yellow to red. And so I could use that as my uh, my peak, my, my overload indicator. Okay, so I've just opened up um, the back of this to uh, allow me to remove the LEDs, a bit fiddly. Um, so basically, as supplied, um, there was a pair of yellow LEDs in series, and I've just added a pair of red LEDs in parallel with those with the opposite polarity. So um, what I did find, notice they're, they're sort of angled downwards. That seems to give the best evenness of illumination. Um, this is evidently originally designed for some kind of incandescent bulb on this little holder here. And uh, they've fitted these LEDs and they've evidently figured out the orientation which gives the minimum um, of kind of hot spotting on the, uh, the face of the meter. So I've gone with that idea. So that was, that was, uh, that was the concept, uh, the kind of hidden um, peak indicator. Um, by turning the uh, whole face of the meter red. Um, so that then required me to, to design a circuit to drive it. So firstly, let's have a look at the requirements of uh, a circuit that would drive a VU meter like this. So this is basically um, a, a DC ammeter uh, of around about 50 microamps for full scale deflection. So you're going to need uh, to rectify the AC signal in order to, to drive it. The problem with using silicon diodes is uh, with that, that large forward voltage drop, the, um, the scale would be really not linear at all um, down in these, these, these low levels. So um, in days of old, VU meters uh, would have used a copper oxide rectifier, which um, I believe has around about a couple hundred millivolts of uh, forward voltage drop. Um, so perhaps you could make a bridge out of uh, shocky diodes, that, that might work. The other approach is to use an op-amp circuit and a precision rectifier, and that's the one I've gone with in, in my case. 
One of the factors that I, I felt was critical in designing the circuit to drive this meter was to try and get the dynamic behavior of the, of the, um, of the needle, the so-called ballistics, um, as close as possible to uh, what a VU meter should be. Now, once again, in, in days of old, you could get a proper VU meter, which uh, could just be driven with a rectifier and the, the movement would have the, the, the correct behavior. And I believe it's um, about a 300 millisecond um, time to travel from uh, minimum to, uh, to full scale. Now what you'll find is that these modern meters um, are much faster responding than a traditional VU meter. They're basically just a little um, panel ammeter um, with a VU scale. And you'll find that um, their um, their ballistics are way too fast. It, uh, it, uh, it really doesn't behave like a VU meter at all. So I was thinking about this, you know, whether I would uh, implement some kind of uh, low pass filtering on the drive circuit. And I felt that you could make use of the behavior of the meter movement itself anyway. And this reminded me of the, the, the classic um, test for uh, whether a, a panel meter was still working, which is uh, what they call the shorted and shake it test because what you'll find is when the, um, when the meter contacts are uh, just open circuit like that and you give it a bit of a shake, get my hand out of the way, the needle moves very freely. However, if one was to connect a piece of wire across the contacts, just short it out, sort of thing you could do with a screwdriver or whatever. What you'll find is for the same level of shake, it's really quite damped now. In fact, it's, it's very, very damped. It hardly wants to move at all. You've got to give it a really good flick in order to get any movement. So I got to thinking about that and I thought, well, if you drive the meter with an appropriate output impedance, you should get the dynamic behavior that you're looking for. If you want it to be slow and floppy like that, then you would drive it with a, a relatively uh, l a larger voltage swing um, through a bigger resistor, basically, um, and you would have something closer to the, the open circuit kind of damping, very, very floppy. Um, and if you want it to, re to respond very quickly, um, very highly damped, then you would uh, drive it with a, a much smaller voltage source um, and uh, a much lower output impedance. And you would get this, um, the, the other, the highly damped behavior. Basically, this is, this is because, um, this damping is because the, um, the movement of the needle creates uh, a back EMF. And um, you can use that to, uh, to damp, its, uh, damp its motion. So I figured, if I could just uh, drive it with uh, um, an amplifier with uh, uh, an appropriate output impedance, um, then we should be able to get the kind of dynamic behavior that we're looking for. Okay, so here's an example of the actual board. And I'll just give a, a brief run through of the circuit design and how I arrived at it. So here is a schematic of the meter driver board. Um, now, what I'll just point out here is um, these two op amps here form a uh, full wave precision rectifier. This one here is merely a, uh, a buffer that drives the meter movement here. And this resistor here is the one which we uh, selected in order to get the um, the dynamics of the uh, meter's behavior the way we wanted with that 300 millisecond uh, sweep time from maximum to minimum. Um, and that turned out to be 360 ohms. So trim pot here to allow us to um, calibrate our uh, meter and get uh, zero VU to be uh, at the level we want. Now, what we have here is a peak detector and this then 
drives into this is here is shown as an op amp it's actually a, a comparator in the uh, in the final circuit so the peak detector circuit here uh, is used to drive the uh, comparator which of uh, pair of comparators which are used to drive the LEDs uh, and basically below a certain level um, the power is applied to the LEDs in the usual direction and the, the yellow LEDs come on and when that peak level exceeds the threshold of the comparator then um, the polarity is reversed on the uh, LEDs and the red ones come on instead of the yellow so the backlit behind, backlight behind the meter changes from yellow to red. Okay so if we consider an input signal here which is moving above and below zero what you'll find is that at the output here we will get a sudden jump to one diode drop above zero we'll follow the waveform we'll get to there and then we'll jump to a diode drop below and follow the waveform again and then and so basically the op amp will take up the slack will the output will shoot from 600 millivolts or so above zero to 600 millivolts or so below zero and basically it will ensure that one of those diodes is keeping things under control um, because at that at that point um, where we cross zero it'll flick from one to the other what this means is because we're not really looking at what's happening in the output we don't care about that what we're actually doing is we're, we're picking up what's happening from either side of these diodes and indeed what we're actually doing is we're looking at the difference between those two that's effectively what we're doing there so what we eventually end up with is we end up with a full wave rectified waveform and we don't have any problems with reading right down well below the forward voltage drop of those diodes um, because what's happening is the uh, the op amp is being used to always overcome that that voltage drop such that what's happening on the other side of the diode is following nicely and that means that the signal there that we pick up to drive the buffer and eventually drive our meter movement with is full wave rectified and is quite linear all the way down to zero basically which is great because we do want um, our low value readings on the meter to be reasonable as well okay so this op amp here is functioning as a peak detector basically on the um, on the upstrokes oh dear It's charging up this, this capacitor here, which holds that level. And the next one I might bring it up further, but it uh, it drops quite slowly. So we have an output which rides the peaks of of our waveform, and that's that's how we do that. Now, um, and the reason for that is because we want um, this. Um, um, comparator circuit here which is driving the LEDs to respond to the peak level uh, not, not, not to the average level so that's the reason for putting this bit in here now what we find here is basically we're using this um, as a comparator this is drawn as an op amp but it's actually a comparator in the real in the real deal um, and this trim pot here is is used uh, it's a, a voltage divider across the um, across the, the uh, between power and ground um, well that's an interesting point actually yes we we have a, a split supply to um, this part of the circuit um, the rest of the mic preamp has a um, plus minus 15 volt split supply so we can take advantage of that this here however is powered um, 
just from half of that between the plus 15 and zero. So a single-ended supply for this part here. Now, so this um, uh, little voltage divider just sets the threshold level for this comparator. Um, basically, what we're doing is we, we then set up another comparator here, um, which is looking at the output of that one, and it uses a voltage divider which just uh, divides the supply voltage in half. So this is basically just, it's basically just being used to invert um, the output of this one. Um, so if it's going above the halfway mark, then the other one goes the opposite way and vice versa. That's basically what we're doing there. Now, um, current limiting resistor for LEDs there, and there's our two pairs of LEDs. Now, not generally a good idea to use LEDs as diodes, of course. Um, you've got to watch the, um, the, uh, the reverse voltage that you put across them. They're not great as diodes. However, because we've got um, two pairs of LEDs in reverse parallel, what you'll find is the, the two that are not illuminated, the, uh, the voltage that they're seeing across them is only the forward voltage drop across the other pair of LEDs. It's not the full supply voltage. So that's why I, I, I believe that LEDs are quite safe to be run like that. So that's basically it. Um, so we come in here, um, full wave precision rectifier, um, which um, comes through a buffer to drive our meter movement, uh, then a peak detector, and then we have um, uh, a comparator, and basically another comparator used as, as an inverter. Um, and that uh, those two outputs bring on either one pair of LEDs or the other. Uh, the only thing to be careful of when selecting your comparator there is that you do want one with a push-pull output because, of course, these need to both source and sync current. Um, some of them are single-ended outputs where you're supposed to use a um, pull-up or pull-down resistor. That's not going to work. You're going to need something um, which, which can, can both source and sync current because these two, they, they swap roles, basically, as we, as we swap between the two LED pairs. And that's basically it. Okay, that's a, a very brief run through of the uh, VU meter driver board. Um, so yeah, that's a, a TL074 uh, quad op amp and uh, the dual comparator that we used. Um, that it would be the uh, trim pot for the uh, threshold for the peak indicator. And that is the uh, trim pot for uh, adjusting the, um, the VU meter um, uh, level. Um, and that's uh, basically it. So. Uh, Power supply under there, input to there, that drives the meter movement and uh, that drives the LEDs. Simple. Thanks for watching.